Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha, the Omega, the Beginning and the Ending, who was and is and is to come. Amen. That's according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, Micah 5, verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, and Colossians chapter 1. They all speak of Yeshua Jesus as God Almighty, as God in the flesh. Amen. The Bible tells us that there is only one way to God, and it is through the Lord Jesus Christ, and He will not refuse anyone who comes to Him. So if you wish to be saved, please confess and forsake your sins to Him, and call out uh, to the Lord Jesus, and, and He will forgive your sins and uh, send you the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, because we must be born again, born by the water and by the Spirit, so that we may have everlasting life and become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, I wanted to talk about this movie from the Avengers. It's called Infinity War, and it's from 2018. Now, this movie is uh, very much tied into Avengers Endgame, I think, which came out in 2019. So it's kind of like a, a two-part movie series. And uh, they are pretty much a, a running storyline from one movie to the next. And so that's why I'm sort of talking about both movies in the same decode. Now, if you're not familiar with Marvel's Avengers, okay, it's like all the superheroes from Marvel, they team up and basically try to save the world. Now, it's interesting that they're called, you know, Marvel superheroes because the Bible says Marvel not because Satan can appear as an angel of light. So this is almost a satanic mockery as we worship these false gods of Thor and Loki and Iron Man and Hulk and Doctor Strange. All of these are false gods who we are essentially worshiping when we root for them in these in all of these Avengers movies. Uh, you know, it's I would say it's idolatry. If you love and care more about Thor and Iron Man than you do the Lord Jesus Christ, that is called idolatry. Okay, the Bible says you shall have no other gods before the Lord your God. Okay, that's one of the Ten Commandments. And so a lot of these children, I myself as well, one of the first movies I, I watched was Superman, and he became an idol to me, as well as Batman and and uh, the Transformers and all these other things. They became false gods to me. And uh, really, I didn't give up all of these things until I finally came to the truth that Jesus Christ is God, that he created all things, and that he wants to have a personal relationship with each one of us. Amen? So just to give you the basic storyline of this movie, all of the Marvel superheroes, or a good part of them, they come together to fight against this alien warlord named Thanos. Now the movie starts out by Thanos essentially uh, making war against uh, Thor and, and Loki and Hulk in outer space. It's some sort of outer space war that's uh, going on and uh, that's very analogous uh, to the war in heaven that we see in Revelation chapter 12. We see that there's a war in heaven between uh, Michael, the arch archangel of God, and, and the holy angels of God, uh, fighting against Satan, the dragon, and his angels. And, and Satan and his angels are cast down to the earth, and then the tribulation period begins. That's in Revelation 12. So the movie starts out with this war, uh, where basically this bloodthirsty warlord named Thanos, who's just another alien, uh, he's, you know, making fights with the Avengers because he wants the Infinity Stones. But I'll get more into all, all of that here in a moment. But 
we see right off the bat that, okay, Thanos is, is the bad guy. He's this bloodthirsty destroyer bent on destroying the, quote, good guys, the Marvel superheroes. Okay, so they're already setting you up to believe that, that Thanos is evil and the Marvel superheroes are the good guys. Yet, what most people do not realize is that Thanos is a representation of Christ who comes from heaven to make war with the earth at his second coming. And so essentially this, all of this uh, propaganda about Thanos being this bloodthirsty warlord is actually painting this unjust picture of the God of heaven who is coming back to pay humanity for their transgressions, for their sins. And uh, even Thanos and his people have sort of this biblical language and uh, Thanos even uh, calls himself I am or refers to himself as I am several times in the movie thus making himself out to be like a God because we know that when Moses spoke to God in the burning bush in Exodus okay God said his name was I am that I am and that's essentially what the tetragrammaton means it's yod heh vav -He, which basically is a translation of I am that I am and uh, yod heh vav -He is in uh, translated into Yehovah or Jehovah or Yahweh you know depending on how you pronounce those four uh, those four letters Y-H-V-H or sometimes it's a uh, it's written as Y-H-W-H. -H. So essentially the very name of God means I am. And uh, so here we see Thanos representing himself as the I am. And that's because Satan and all the Luciferians who wrote this movie script want you to believe that the God of Heaven is just an alien warlord uh, bent on destroying humanity for no reason. So here we see Loki and Thor and Hulk, they lose a battle against Thanos and they have to give them the Tesseract, which is basically Satan's cube, you know, the, the black cube of Saturn. And uh, inside of it is some sort of infinity stone, which is, you know, supposed to be able to control certain elements of the created world. Okay, but there's more about that here in a moment. Now here we see that Thanos has defeated Thor, he's holding Thor's head and uh, basically there's a, a, pretty, a pretty sad scene where uh, Thanos kills Loki in front of Thor uh, which you know really puts him on this, this uh, vengeful quest to destroy Thanos and, and that's this is sort of the the premise of the movie is that Thor has to get revenge uh, they have to protect Earth from Thanos here we see Loki is giving the uh, black cube tesseract to Thanos and he says the sun will shine on us again and uh, Thanos says your optimism is misplaced as guardian and then essentially uh, Thanos uh, stops this uh, this dagger that Loki uh, thrusts at him and uh, he, he kills Loki the, the brother of Thor right in front of Thor's face and so of course if you were a fan of the superheroes of the Marvel Marvel superheroes you would automatically hate this person Thanos so it's getting you like emotionally tied into this idea that the, the one who is coming is this hateful murderer and that you should hate him as well. So it's kind of like this subtle manipulation of the viewers as well. And uh, he crushes up the black cube tesseract and he gets the infinity stone. Okay, so basically Thanos is on this quest to gather all of the uh, infinity stones so that he could reduce the world or the, the universal population of uh, you know everybody by 50% in order to make things better in terms of resources and, and making sure everyone has enough which is a very 
a very globalist point of view, you know, something that uh, Bill Gates or, or or like Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum would say, because, you know, they have to balance humanity with the environment to create sustainability, okay, which was, you know, basically written on the Georgia Guidestones by the, the Rosicrucians. And uh, so it's, it's very much a Luciferian plot to reduce the world population and to create a more sustainable uh, amount of people on the earth. Okay, so they're, they're trying to make, they're trying to give God this sort of false doctrine of depopulation, uh, which isn't true. When God created Adam and Eve, he said, go be fruitful and multiply okay there's plenty of resources on the earth uh, for everybody if we would just go out there and work the fields and and uh, you know live in according to God's will he will bless the land he will send rain he will bring in harvest for the people but because we rebel against God he withholds the rain he sends uh, you know different plagues he sends locusts to eat the crops he sends tornadoes he sends floods you know all so that people might repent and, and be saved because it's one thing okay if he destroys your crops you might look to him and be saved for eternity whereas if you keep rebelling against God yeah, you might be able to feed your belly if he didn't send the plagues, but you would go into everlasting destruction. And so God sends these plagues so that we, we might wake up and repent and get right with him before we go into everlasting condemnation and punishment. So here we see Loki is trying to kill Thanos with the sword or with the little dagger. And that's when Thanos kills Loki in front of Thor. Okay, setting this very emotional premise and the Avengers, a.k.a. Satan and his fallen angels are the good guys. <laughs> That's really what this is about. Okay, these the this worship of the superheroes is really, you know, worship of the fallen angels and, and the forbidden knowledge of transhumanism and the forbidden knowledge given to mankind by the fallen angels and such as sorcery with Doctor Strange and so on and so forth. And after Thanos kills Loki and tries to kill Thor, okay, somehow uh, the Hulk was able to escape and he was sent down to the earth. <laughs> okay, so this is very much like the war in heaven in Revelations 12 where uh, Michael and, and the angels of God overcome Satan and his angels and cast him down to the earth. And so here we see uh, that Hulk falls down from the sky like a star falling from heaven and he crashes into the house of Doctor Strange, one of these wizards, which of course is, is a sin. It's a, it's a sin to, to practice sorcery and witchcraft because those powers come from Satan the god of this world. And uh, when Bruce gets cast down, he says, Thanos is coming, he is coming. Okay, so it's like a warning to rally the troops, you know, get all the kings of the earth together for the battle of Armageddon. And here you see Doctor Strange and one of his sorcerers, uh, you know, trying to figure out what's going on here. Why did this guy just fall from heaven? And who is this that he's warning about? Okay. It's all talking about the Battle of Armageddon when Christ comes to make war with the Antichrist and the kings of the earth. Revelations chapter 19. So here we see that Doctor Strange goes into his little magic portal, his Stargate, okay? And uh, he goes and finds uh, Iron Man. I forget his name. I think his name is Tony Stark. And he gets Tony Stark to join their Avengers crew to make war with Thanos at his coming. And so here we see Doctor Strange says, I need you to come with me. Talking to Tony Stark. And Tony is like, what is going on? We need your help. The fate of the universe is at stake. Okay, so if you think of it from the Luciferian standpoint... 
Okay, the Masons believe that uh, Yahweh, or Adonai, the God of Israel, is actually the one who is evil, who enslaves humanity in this controlled paradigm, and that Lucifer is the true light, ready to liberate mankind uh, and overcome Adonai slash Yahweh. Okay, so from a Luciferian standpoint, you would say that Thanos represents God, the God of Israel, and the Avengers are like Lucifer and the, the other fallen angels who are trying to liberate mankind from the evil tyranny of Thanos, who is supposed to represent Jesus. So after an alliance is made between Doctor Strange, the Hulk, and Tony Stark, uh, then they begin to tell us what the Infinity Stones are, and it's basically, uh, you know, it, it falls in line with the Big Bang Theory and, and Darwinism, but it also sort of has like this magical element to it as well, so it's like mixing the occult with the Big Bang Theory. And so they give us this, you know, pseudoscience of the cosmos. It says, at the dawn of the universe, there was nothing. Then, boom. Okay, so it's a Big Bang theory. The Big Bang sent six elemental crystals hurling across the virgin universe. Okay, so again, this is undermining what the Bible says in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis says that God created all things the heaven and the earth, the sun, moon, and the stars, and even created man from the dust of the earth and, and blew this, the breath of life into him, and man became a living soul. So this is undermining what the book of Genesis says, and is saying that, oh, we're all just a chance accident of this cos cosmos having a big bang and creating these six elemental stones which control the nature of our reality. It's complete hogwash, <laughs> okay? It's, it's nonsense, it's not true. How could something unintelligent like a Big Bang create everything that we see today which has very intricate and complex patterns, repeating patterns, and even if you look at DNA, very complex, very, very well designed. Okay, how do you create something that is designed by accident? It is like throwing a needle uh, with some yarn in the washing machine and <laughs> when you stop the washing machine or, or, the, or the dryer, uh, it comes out as a knitted sweater. <laughs> okay, it's completely impossible. Intelligently designed, created things is not derived from unintelligent accidents, okay? Just look around, okay? All of the animals are male and female. Uh, all of the patterns, the phi ratio is within most of God's creation. You could see this repeating phi, phi ratio. How can all that happen by accident? Okay, it's just nonsense. So this astrologer slash, you know, mystic, this wise man from the East, tells us that, oh, you know, we're all here because of a cosmic big bang, and whoever has these six elemental stones can control the universe. And so that's what Thor's out to do, gather the infinity stones to depopulate the universe just for, you know, his own benefit. And they tell us each control an essential aspect of existence. One stone controls space. One controls reality. One controls power. One controls soul, one controls mind, and the other is truth, and that's the one that Doctor Strange is supposed to protect. Okay, he's one of the, you know, universal protectors of one of the stones. Okay, it's just nonsense. Making out the sorcerers <laughs> and the transhumanists, you know, Iron Man and the geneticists, who was Bruce Banner, okay, they're all the superheroes, and, uh, you know, God, the creator of all things, is actually the bad guy. Okay, that's what they want you to believe. And Tony Stark is like, tell me his name again. And uh, Bruce Banner, a.k.a. the Hulk, says Thanos. And he says, uh, Thanos invades planets. He takes what he wants. So he's like this, you know, merciless warlord. 
He's a plague, Tony. He wipes out half the population. Okay, so they're making out Thanos to be this disgustingly cruel person, and he's supposed to represent Christ at his second coming. Okay, so they're making God out to be the bad guy, while all of the sinners are supposedly the good guys. Okay, the the alchemist, the geneticist, the transhumanist, the wizard, okay? They're all the good guys, right? No, it's not true. Now, the scripture tells us that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. And that's why God sent his only begotten Son, you know, God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit, okay? They sent God the Son to live as a man, as a son of Adam, to save mankind. And anyone who believes in Yeshua Jesus and follows him will have everlasting life if we, you know, follow his commandments and turn away from our sins. Uh, but the Bible says that the world is at war with God. Okay, there's two kingdoms at play here. There's a kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the earth, and the two are at war with one another. And so that's why God sent his only son into the world so that the world might be saved. But uh, God is just being portrayed here as a merciless warlord. But that's why the Bible says that, uh, you know, the preaching of the cross is, is foolishness to those who are perishing because... You know, the average person will just buy into this propaganda of an alien coming to destroy the earth, but they won't consider that Jesus is God who came to save mankind. It's because they love darkness rather than the light, and that is the condemnation of the world. And uh, the Avengers are talking about, you know, how they're going to, to stop Thanos, and they say uh, he has the power and the space stones already. And Tony Stark is like, okay, what's our timeline? Okay, so the Avengers, are, some of them are already gathering to protect mankind from these so-called alien invaders. And, and this plays into the idea that uh, the fallen angels will come to the earth as so-called good aliens. That the gray hybrids and the fallen angels will appear to mankind as good aliens. But Jesus and his uh, army will be seen as a bad aliens. So it reduces Christ from the, the position of the creator, the almighty God, to just another alien warlord, okay? So the, the so-called Avengers are the good guys protecting Earth, sinful Earth, from the bad guy who's coming to destroy the planet, okay? And Bruce Banner says if he gets his hands on all six stones, Tony, he could destroy life on a scale hitherto undreamt of. Okay, so they must stop this bad alien guy or else the whole universe will be destroyed in part. Okay, now the Bible says that yes, God will destroy this current world uh, because of the sinfulness of creation. That the creation has gone astray from the Creator. If we would have lived in harmony with God according to His commandments, there would be no sin, there would be no evil, it would just be a paradise on earth. But because we sinned and ate of the forbidden tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil, we brought sin and death into the world. And so now this world is, is so corrupt and in a bad shape that God is going to destroy it by fire the bible says that the elements will melt with fervent heat and everything will be dissolved and then god will bring forth a new heaven and a new earth after the tribulation i'm not sure if that's during the millennial kingdom or after the millennial kingdom i'm not sure how that works but there will be a new heaven and a new earth according to the book of revelations and also in the Old Testament, it talks about that as well. So, cue the alien deception. Now, I believe there will be an alien deception. There's probably going to be a Project Blue Beam where they project these images of spaceships in the sky. 
And I believe this is the, the strong delusion or the deception uh, that God will send to the whole world to believe a lie, meaning it's a deception, uh, because they love not the truth. Okay, that's talked about in 2 Thessalonians 2 in connection to the rise of the Antichrist and his new world order. Okay, so there's going to be an alien deception. It's probably going to involve uh, Project Blue Beams. Maybe even it will include space UFOs or you know, UFO ships, whether it's made by the U.S. military or if it is fallen angel technology, I'm not sure, but they'll probably give something to us uh, to really solidify the deception. But essentially, okay, these aliens are not from outer space. They're interdimensional, meaning they live in the spiritual realm, just like the Bible says concerning Satan and his fallen angels. And uh, there's also these hybrid grays which I think are synthetic bodies created to house the spirits of the fallen Nephilim. Now they could also just be a new hybrid race altogether as well. So here we see the alien bad guys, which is supposed to represent Christ. They are destroying the earth and they're trying to find the infinity stones. So the Avengers assemble to protect the earth. And there you even see like a, a spaceship beaming down these people. So you, here you have this idea of this, uh, you know, sort of tractor beam or, or the, uh, you know, like the beam me up Scotty type of thing um, that's, that's in Star Wars. And so you have this idea that people can vanish and disappear uh, by means of alien technology. And I believe this will be used... Uh, to cover up the rapture, the Christian rapture, will Christ, when Christ comes to take his remnant Christians up to heaven in this rapture event, the Bible says it'll be in an instant, in, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in 1 Corinthians 15, 52. So when Christ takes his people home, they'll probably say, oh, it was just the aliens, maybe the, the bad aliens took them up, to their spaceship uh, and they're coming back to make war with mankind okay so that's very possibly what they're going to say and so here you have some of Thanos uh, his his henchmen were sent to the earth as aliens uh, to find the infinity stones and uh, they're actually looking for Doctor Strange who is one of the stone keepers for the infinity stone of truth if I'm if I remember correctly and the wizard slash sorcerer says, you're trespassing in this city and on this planet. Okay, making again the, the sinful sorcerer out to be the savior of mankind against this evil alien invader. And you have the transhumanist techno giant Tony Stark, you know, also telling them to get lost and... Uh, they, they say, bring me the stone, and so there's this huge, long fight scene between the alien bad guys and the so-called Avenger good guys. Now, at the end of the little battle, there's this, uh, you know, alien tractor beam where he takes up uh, Doctor Strange, if I'm not mistaken, up into the spaceship. Thus, I believe, is predictive programming for the coming rapture event, you know, this disappearance. Uh, of the of some of the people aka the Christian rapture and he gets beamed up to the spaceship because they want his infinity stone and you have spider-man also helping the Avengers as well then the movie switches over to this outer space scene where these uh, you know I think they're the guardians of the galaxy they find Thor is still alive in outer space and so they pick him up and they find out what's going on and they find out that this woman Gamora is the daughter of Thanos well actually the the adopted stepdaughter of Thanos and she says the entire time I knew Thanos he only ever had one goal and that was to bring balance to the universe by wiping out half of all life okay so making Thanos out to be this uh you know bloodthirsty warlord who just bent on destroying the population of the universe okay not even close to what truly is going on at the battle of armageddon 
she said he used to kill people planet by planet, massacre by massacre, including my own, speaking of her own planet. And if Thanos gets all six Infinity Stones, he could wipe out half the galaxy with the snap of his fingers like this. Then back at Earth, we see that, okay, there's, there's this huge UFO encounter, this alien encounter, I think is in, in New York. And people are reporting that um, someone was, was abducted, so there's missing people. Just like, uh, you know, after the rapture, they're probably going to say, oh, the missing people were abducted by aliens. Okay, so they, they start talking about the alien confrontation in New York on TV and how there's missing people. Now, this is one of the Avengers that was created using an Infinity Stone. And he says what the stone was warning me about. And the TV says that Tony Stark is missing. Okay, so basically... Tony uh, went up uh, to to find Doctor Strange to save Doctor Strange from the spaceship when he was beamed up and so they think that maybe Tony Stark was abducted as well I think and then uh, the alien bad guys also attack those Avengers watching the TV screen because again that guy has an infinity stone in his forehead and uh, when they began to lose the battle then the rest of the avengers step in and here you have captain america with a beard and this is one of the alien bad guys okay isn't it funny how the alien bad guy looks like a tall alien hybrid that's interesting so maybe they're gonna say that you know the bad alien hybrids who may or may not attack humanity are part of you know the team of of Christ maybe they'll try to uh, frame Christ in that manner okay they, they could lie to the people with any sort of spin that they want to put on it you know the Antichrist will be so captivating and everybody will believe what he says and so here the the Avengers with Captain America they're able to defeat some of the alien bad guys and right before they get any answers then the alien bad guys get beamed up again to outer space. Okay, sort of like that rapture predictive programming. Then later it cuts to a scene where Gamora is talking to Thanos. And she says, I was a child when you took me in. And Thanos said, I saved you. And she was like, no, we're happy on my home planet. Scrounging for scraps going to bed hungry so basically what happened was Thanos took over her planet and they were like already dying because they didn't have enough resources kind of like during the apocalypse when humanity will be going through a, a famine okay and uh, so Thanos said that he wiped out half their planet to help them survive because of the lack of resources so it's just one big twisted narrative, twisted deception that's going on here. Making God out to be, you know, this globalist type person who just wants to depopulate the earth. No, actually God has the ability uh, to clothe and, and feed every single creature in his creation. God is not uh, lacking in anything. Uh, but they just want to make this seem like God is, you know, just bent on destroying us all. Uh, just, you know, for for the precepts of the Luciferian doctrine of, you know, balancing the population with the, with the uh, environment, if that makes sense. Dano says, here, your planet was on the brink of collapse. I'm the one who stopped that. And then he says, the children born have known nothing but full bellies and clear skies. It's a paradise. And she says, because you murdered half the planet. So <laughs> they're trying to say that when Christ comes back to destroy the sinners, he's just doing it because there's a lack of resources, which is not the case at all. Definitely not the case if you read the Bible. It's because, you know, God has to pay back sin. He is a just judge. Uh, all the liars, all the thieves, all the murderers, all of the uh, idolaters, okay, uh, they will all be 
uh, destroyed at his second coming because uh, the sinful people are not allowed in the new heaven and the new earth because they will just destroy and corrupt the new heaven and the new earth with their sinful ways. And that's why Satan or Lucifer got kicked out of heaven because Lucifer be began sinning according to you know Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. He began sinning in heaven and, and causing you know so much trouble in heaven that God had to kick him out of heaven to the earth. And did Satan stop sinning? No. Then Satan deceived Eve and Adam in the garden and has been trying to destroy humanity and make war with God ever since just because Satan wants the throne of God. And Thanos says, you know, depopulating half the planet is a small price to pay for salvation. Okay, totally a, a perversion, a twisting of the truth of why Jesus is coming to make war with the earth and she's like you're insane okay so it's complete like slander and, and propaganda by the luciferians to make uh, christ and his second coming out to be something that it's not this is subtle mind manipulation this is subtle programming for people to believe uh that the antichrist and his and, and his new world order and the kings of the earth are, are fighting against christ for a just cause. And then later on in Avengers Infinity War, there's this huge battle, which is kind of like a mini version of, of Armageddon. And uh, basically uh, the Avengers with Wakanda, the, the city of Wakanda, they are able to, you know, make war with the alien invaders, you know, the, the people of Thanos. And uh, there's this huge uh, battle, and uh, it's all to pr protect the Infinity Stones and to stop Thanos from achieving absolute power. And so there's this huge battle where the Avengers are, are making war with the aliens, invading the Earth. And uh, this is kind of like a, a mini uh, battle of Armageddon, but uh, in Avengers Endgame, it's actually the full-blown uh, battle of Armageddon or at least that's what it's supposed to represent according to the biblical understanding of the end times and then you have Iron Man's war machine his friend war machine and all the tribes of Wakanda and all, all the other Avengers are making war with this with these aliens which you know which is supposed to represent the armies of heaven you know, which includes the, the saints of Christ who will come with Christ at his return. And it's funny because the aliens, they look super demonic. I mean, they, they got these like demonic horns. It looks like something out of some sort of satanic book or something. And then here you have all the, you know, so-called good guys, the, you know, Marvel people, with the transhumanist robots and the Hulk and everything else. And uh, I personally think that uh, this guy, I forget his name, um, I think he's a Black Panther. I think he's supposed to represent Obama, who is the Antichrist. And uh, so this whole city is actually ran by him, uh, this Black Panther guy. And so I think it represents Obama leading the army against uh, Christ at his return, as we see in Revelations 19 and 2 Thessalonians 2. The leader of Wakanda says, you're in Wakanda now. So they're basically making war with the alien invaders, aka Christ and his armies. You know, and the Bible says that um, all the tribes of the earth, all, all the kings of the earth will gather together at that great battle uh, of Armageddon, which will take place just north of Jerusalem in the valley of Megiddo, and uh, because Christ will return to Jerusalem. Okay, so here we see that all of the tribes of the earth, you know, all of the different Avengers are coming together to save humanity. But this actually isn't the full blown battle of Armageddon, that's actually an Avengers endgame. And uh, at this point, Thanos has like most of 
I think he has like five stones and there's only one stone left and it's in this guy's uh, forehead and uh, Thanos is coming for him and he says you know we're out of time if he gets a stone half the universe dies and so she tries to kill or she tries to destroy the stone so that Thanos doesn't get it and she's uh, doing all of her you know witch power <laughs> her her uh, Luciferian witch power to destroy the stone but it doesn't work and Thanos comes and he wipes out all the Avengers and uh, the witch lady is fighting is uh, you know basically fighting off Thanos but uh, he's able to uh, overcome her through, th through the use of the infinity stones and he's able to get the the last remaining infinity stone and he takes it out of the guy's forehead and essentially kills him and now he has the power of the universe because he has the six elemental stones of creation which is a lie and then out of nowhere Thor comes back to take his revenge and throws this massive axe that he forged in outer space uh, into the chest of Thanos but uh, Thanos already has the infinity stones and all he has to do is snap his fingers and half the people disappear so that's exactly what he does. Thanos snaps his fingers with the six infinity stones and his wish is granted like it's a genie in the bottle. <laughs> and all of a sudden he, you know, disappears in some sort of, you know, Stargate portal and half the people on the earth and the whole universe uh, disappear. He's like, where did he go? Where'd Thanos go after he snapped his fingers? And Thor's like, what just happened? I thought I killed him. And then all of a sudden, half the people start disappearing and turning into dust. So this, I believe, is also predictive programming for the rapture. Because Jesus says that uh, two will be in the field, one shall be taken, and the other refused. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one shall be received, and the other refused in the Tinsdale Bible translation. And so this is exactly what we see. You know, a one person disappears and the other is left behind. So I believe this is more predictive programming for the rapture of the church, you know, which is the instant disappearance of God's people. This is also seen in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, where it says that basically Christ will appear in the sky the dead in Christ will rise first, and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up with him in the air uh, forever to be with him. Which is sort of paraphrasing what the scripture says. But that's essentially what it is. It's an instant snatching away of God's people up to heaven uh, before the tribulation begins, before the sudden destruction. And so here you even see that uh, some of the Avengers start disappearing as well. And this is Black Panther, and he just, you know, vanishes into dust. You know, right into thin air. So that goes on for a while. All the people start disappearing, or half the people start disappearing. And they're trying to figure out, like, what is going on? And then I think they finally figure out that, oh, Thanos accomplished his mission. He was able to wipe out half the universe with the snap of his finger. And then Thanos retires and goes back to some peaceful garden out in the galaxy to be at rest because now his mission is accomplished. And he sort of has this weird smile at the end, you know, knowing that he wiped out half humanity and now there will be a proper balance uh, to the universe like the Georgia Guidestone talks about. Okay, this is not what God is about. This is not why Jesus is coming at the end of the tribulation period. Christ is coming uh, to destroy the wicked kings of the earth, the leaders of the new world order, and all of the sinners because they have made war with the God of heaven and have destroyed his prophets and his people and uh, all of creation it is under the bondage of the evil ones who walk upon the earth, all of the sinful people. And so God will liberate creation from the oppressors and God will then establish his kingdom in Jerusalem uh, for a thousand years and there will be peace on the earth for a thousand years 
you can read about that in Revelations chapter 20 and Zechariah 14 and Isaiah chapter 2 and uh, Psalms chapter 2 talks about the, the sun uh, raining from Jerusalem, from Zion. And so that will be the Sabbath rest, the 7,000 year of peace, the seventh millennium of peace. We're looking at Avengers Endgame, and it picks up uh, where the Infinity War left off. And here we're seeing that some of the other Avengers who are not involved in the battle, uh, such as Hawkeye, he, uh, he's just hanging out with his family, and all of a sudden, his family disappears. Now, granted, in the Bible, it's only a small amount of Christians who will disappear and be taken up to, the, up to heaven before the tribulation begins, but uh, in this case, it's 50% of all people whether they believe, uh, you know, in, in Christ or not. And so, basically, uh, he's just hanging out with his family on a regular day. And uh, he's, Hawkeye is teaching his daughter how to shoot archery. His uh, sons are playing catch. His wife is making hot dogs. And uh, they're just hanging out at the ranch or, you know, wherever, some homestead or something out in the woods. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden they disappear. And this is just like... Jesus said uh, when referring to the day of the Lord coming it'll be as in the days of Noah as in the days of Lot they'll be going about their business um, you know buying selling planting marrying giving in marriage uh, until you know in Noah's case the flood came and, and took them all away and in Lot's case the fire and brimstone rained down from heaven but uh, keep in mind when those events happened Noah was safe in the ark and Lot was taken out of Sodom and Gomorrah okay so it's the same thing when the day of tribulation begins people will be going about their daily business doing their normal things and then you know God will take his people in the rapture a sudden disappearance and then the sudden destruction comes just like Lot was taken out of Sodom before the fire and the brimstone came down and when the Christians are taken up to heaven, it is like Noah entering into the ark and being safe up above the waters, okay? We who are in Christ who are counted worthy to escape in the rapture, not all Christians will escape in the rapture, but those who are truly following Christ and his commandments, they will be taken up and be safe in the metaphorical ark. And uh, Hawkeye is telling his wife, two mustards please. And his wife is like, okay, I got it. And he's like giving his daughter a high five. Good job with the archery. And then all of a sudden, she vanishes. And he's looking for her. Where did she go? Leela? Honey? And all of a sudden, he can't find his wife or his kids either. They all just vanished into thin air. Just think about it. What will people believe when their loved ones go missing? When their co-worker, who is a Christian, goes missing, how will Satan explain it away? Okay, he'll probably have to say that it was aliens. That's what this part of this alien deception is. On, on top of the, uh, the fallen angels coming to the earth, because they were kicked out of heaven after the war uh, in Revelations 12 between Michael and the holy angels and Satan and the fallen angels. So he runs around calling out to his family, can't find them, and he becomes super bitter. And I think he becomes like a hired hand or like a mercenary of sorts. And uh, then the Avengers, who are left behind also, recruit him to the team. And then this, uh, this movie wasn't that interesting to me. It was just really kind of nonsensical because the entire time, uh, they are planning to go back in time to get the infinity stones before Thanos can do the snap of his fingers. And so it's just this weird random tangent where they go back in time uh, to different Marvel scenes um, and try to get the stones. And it's just this weird convoluted tangent that really doesn't have anything to do with Bible prophecy other than to explain it away and make it something that it's not. Um, but uh, you'll see here 
what I'm talking about. Now all of the Avengers who are left behind, who didn't disappear, they're sort of gathering at their base or whatever. And it's been 23 days since Thanos came to Earth. Uh, the world governments are in pieces. The parts that are still working are trying to take a census and it looks like he did. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. Thanos wiped out 50% of all living creatures. So they essentially find out where Thanos is, is resting in some, you know, random planet out in galaxy. I don't even believe there's an outer space with different planets, but that's beside the point. And uh, basically, Thanos is just chilling in his house after he depopulated half the universe. And the Avengers come in and kill him. And here you have War Machine and, and one of the other Marvel superheroes holding him down. They chop off his hand and take his gauntlet with the stones. And they find out that the Infinity Stones are gone. They're not in the gauntlet. And they question, like, what happened? Where's the stones? And he said the universe required correction. After that, the stones served no purpose beyond temptation. So Thanos is saying that after he depopulated the universe, he decided to destroy the stones. And some of the Avengers got mad at him and said, you murdered trillions. And he says, you should be grateful. <laughs> Give me a break. And uh, one of the Avengers says, where are the stones? And he says, gone. Reduced to atoms. So apparently the Infinity Stones are not, you know, they're not never ending. <laughs> they can be destroyed. So that's kind of a paradoxical name if you ask me. And he said, I used the stones to destroy the stones. And then he refers to himself as I am. Once again, just like Jesus did when he was on the earth, Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. Okay, referring to himself as the Lord God Almighty who appeared to Moses in the burning bush. And then after that, there's a scene where Thor is so angry that he kills Thanos. Now back at uh, planet Earth, the Ant-Man, one of the Avengers, uh, comes out of some sort of, you know, uh, microscopic environment that he was trapped in for several years. And he comes back and sees that the Earth looks like it's a post-apocalyptic world. Uh, everything is shut down. There's garbage everywhere. Uh, and there's all these stones of people who disappeared. And he sees this huge uh, sanctuary of all these stones. And when he goes to look at the stones, uh, the, the stones are the vanished people, the people who disappeared, aka the people who were raptured. And so he tries to find out if his loved ones were raptured or not. And he goes around looking at all the stones of the vanished people. And he's like, please, please, no Cassie. But he ends up finding that Cassie's name is not on the list, so he, he finds his loved one. And uh, then he meets up with the Avengers and talks about the possibility of time travel. And he says, have either of you guys ever studied quantum physics? And they're like, only to make conversation. And he begins to tell them five years ago, right before, uh, he was in a place called the quantum realm, this like microscopic environment. And he says a quantum realm is like a, a microscopic universe. And to get in there, you have to be incredibly small. So apparently you could time travel if you get reduced into this microscopic uh, tiny person, which is what Ant-Man is able to do. And so he got stuck in there the whole time they were fighting Thanos and everything. And that's when he came back. And so now he's with the Avengers to try to time travel and make things right. Now, eventually Ant-Man begins working with Tony Stark and uh, Bruce Banner to, to really fine tune this time travel thing. And they get the time travel suit going and they use something called PIM particles to be able to uh, reduce into these uh, tiny atoms. And uh, War Machine begins to go on this weird tangent and he says, you know, if we could do this, you know, go back in time, why don't we just find baby Thanos, you know, and and basically kill him. And so here we have War Machine, uh, you know, coming up with this idea that they go back in time and they kill baby Thanos. Now keep in mind, Thanos is supposed to represent Christ. And this is exactly what Satan 
uh, tried to do. Satan used the corrupt king Herod to try to kill baby Jesus before he was two years old. In the Bible it says that King Herod saw the star of Bethlehem and the wise men told him that it was a sign of the Messiah that he was born and that's when King Herod you know commanded that all of the children two years and younger you know in Israel were to be slaughtered and so literally Satan tried to kill baby Jesus just like War Machine is uh, suggesting that they do with Sanos isn't that interesting it's because the same spirit that tried to kill baby Jesus is the one writing these scripts okay it is a, it's a spiritual war that we are in and uh, Hulk who is now able to be uh, in Hulk mode but still have his intelligence he says first of all that's horrible and he's like it's Thanos so they try to justify killing uh, baby Thanos okay it's pretty pretty demonic stuff and then so they they figure out that they have to do a time heist to get all of the crystals at certain points in time and so there's three separate teams of Avengers that go back in time they try to get the crystals so that they could basically defeat Thanos before he snaps his fingers and destroys half the universe and he says six stones three teams one shot so they all have their targets uh, their their specific targets in, in which they go back and get the stones to try to get all six stones to save the universe and they go to Tony Stark's lab and they get on the time machine and they say today we have a chance to take it all back to get the stones to get them back so all of the Avengers get sent to, to different points in time the three different teams and they go through a huge portal a quantum portal and yeah it just becomes super choppy and very complicated so I'm not going to even try to decode all of those little trips into the past but after a series of events Thanos was somehow able uh, to use the technology from one of the teams to basically transport himself into the future and uh, basically fight the Avengers in the future um, you know coming from the past and so it's pretty complicated but uh, this again is supposed to represent the battle of Armageddon where Thanos the destroyer comes to destroy the earth which is supposed to represent Christ coming to destroy the Antichrist and his new world order and uh, he meets up uh, with the Avengers and he says you cannot live with your own failure and so where did that bring you back to me now this is the past Thanos who doesn't have the the stones so now he's going into the future to try to get the stones to destroy the the future Avengers who are trying to stop him in the future I know it's super confusing and uh, he said I thought by eliminating half of life the other half would thrive but you've shown me that's impossible and as long as there are those that remember what was, there will always be those that are unable to accept what can be. And therefore, Sano says, I will shred this universe down to its last atom. And then, with the stones you've collected for me, Sanos will create a new universe, teeming with life that knows not what it has lost, but only what it has been given. A grateful universe so this is exactly what God said he would do in his word not not exactly but it's similar to what God said he would do God said he would destroy this current world and create a new heaven and a new earth a new paradise for his people and that's after the great white throne judgment you could read about that in revelations chapter 20 to 22 and it talks about the new heaven and the, the new earth and God dwelling with his creation and there being peace uh, forever. And uh, But they're making it seem like Thanos is going to wipe out everybody so there's no one to remember that he's evil. And then he's going to create a new one and everybody will be grateful, which, it, which isn't the truth of what God is doing. The Bible says that uh, people you know, in, in the millennial kingdom 
will actually be able to look down into the valley and see those who who are there uh, in in uh, hell in, in the valley of of death uh, where the worm does not die and they will look upon them and remember not to sin anymore and you could read about that in Isaiah chapter 66 at the end of the chapter so those who come into everlasting life with Christ they will not only have their memories but they will be able to see those who are in punishment as a remembrance of the wages of sin and then Sano says to the Avengers in all of my years of conquest violence slaughter it was never personal but I'll tell you now what I'm about to do to your stubborn annoying little planet I'm gonna enjoy it okay so they make God out to be this sadistic uh, person who loves to kill and destroy which, which isn't true you know Jesus is called the Prince of Peace he came not to condemn the world but that through him they might be saved he doesn't want to kill anybody but he is a just God he has to punish sin or else uh, injustice and, and lawlessness will bring a, a wake of destruction and death into his creation so God has to nip it in the bud God has to deal with the sinners and uh, ultimately that will create a paradise in the new heavens and the new earth just think, think about it if there are no sinners uh, there will be paradise if there are no liars there will there will be no lies if there are no thieves there would be no theft if there are no murderers there would be no murder and so God essentially is creating a paradise by bringing judgment to the sinners and then here you see all the armies of Thanos come from outer space it represents the armies of heaven coming down to the earth for the battle of Armageddon and Thanos has this massive army and uh, then Captain America is there ready to face Thanos and then that's when Doctor Strange comes with the portals and brings all the tribes of the earth together to make war with Thanos and his army this is exactly what the Bible says would happen that all of the kings of the earth would gather together to make war against Christ and his saints so the first one to come through the portal is uh, the king of Wakanda the the African Black Panther who I believe represents the Antichrist who will be leading this fight against Christ at his second coming at Christ's return and then you see all these other Avengers come through the portals and uh, Thanos is just watching all of the the armies gathered together against him and then you have Doctor Strange and the, this other witch. You have the tribes of Wakanda and all of these other Avengers and tribes gathered together. You have people on flying horses. You have like these Asian sorcerers. You have Thor, Iron Man, Iron Man's lady friend, Doctor Strange. And uh, he's like, is that everyone? And he's like, what, you wanted more? Okay, so it's like this massive army of all the kings of the earth and all the tribes of the earth coming together to save planet earth from the alien invader Thanos who is supposed to represent Christ. And then you also have Hulk and Ant-Man as well. Now you might say that Hulk is a representation of a Nephilim, a, a hybrid giant. So maybe there will be hybrid giants there at Armageddon as well most of us heard about the story of the Kandahar giant where a special ops group of soldiers went in to kill one of these giants that, that was living in the Middle East this red-haired giant with like six fingers and six toes and uh, it was incredibly difficult to kill one of these giants uh, with like machine guns and stuff so maybe Hulk represents uh, some of the Nephilim that are still on the earth today and so all of the kings of the earth, all of Satan's, uh, you know, armies are, are gathered together uh, for the Battle of Armageddon. And so like a, seriously, like a massive fight scene takes place. It's like half an hour, 45 minutes long, I would say, if I had to guess. And then at the end of this massive fight scene, Tony Stark, the transhumanist, uh, basically, and, and roboticist, uh, basically 
is facing off with Thanos. Nobody was able to really stop Thanos yet. None of the Avengers. And so Thanos is able to get his hands on the uh, gauntlet with all of the Infinity Stones. And he's about ready to make his wish with the snap of his fingers. And he says, I am inevitable. And he finds out that the Infinity Stones were taken out of his glove. And so somehow Tony Stark was able to pull a fast one and was able to get the Infinity Stones out of the gauntlet. And so then Tony Stark with the power of the universe <laughs> is able to do a snap of his fingers to destroy Thanos and his army. And all of Thanos' army begins to disappear. And Thanos just sits there knowing that he has been defeated. And then Thanos turns to dust. And uh, that's, you know, this is what <laughs> Satan and, and the Luciferians want to do. They want to destroy Christ that is coming so that they could inhabit uh, the earth and, and the heavens uh, for their own evil purposes. Uh, but we, we know what it's like when Satan is in power. Uh, just look at planet Earth today. Everybody is confused. Uh, everybody is killing each other. Everybody is corrupt and wicked uh, every which way. And that's because Satan is a god of this world until Christ comes back. And so imagine if Satan was in power uh, for the new heavens and the new earth. It would be completely... Uh, disgusting <laughs> existence full of lies and treachery and deceit and broken heartedness and you know all the painful stings of sin uh, would go on forever and ever if Christ does not defeat Satan but we know that Jesus defeats Satan and the Antichrist at the Battle of Armageddon and Revelations 20 says that Satan Lucifer will be bound with chains and will be cast into the bottomless pit. And so there is victory for those who put their trust in Christ, even though the Antichrist will reign the earth for seven years during the tribulation period in the New World Order. There's victory when Christ returns with his saints. Amen. And actually, uh, those people who were killed by the Antichrist for resisting the mark of the beast and the image of the beast will be resurrected by Jesus, uh, according to Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, and they will be alive uh, to reign and rule in his kingdom, in Christ's kingdom, on the earth for a thousand years. So at the uh, end of the movie, we see that... Uh, According to the Luciferians, they think they're going to beat Christ and have total victory. Uh, but again, I urge you all to read the Bible, read the book of Revelations, read the Old Testament prophecies, especially Daniel chapter 7, because Christ wins in the end. Amen. And if you haven't given your life to Christ, please do so. Time is very short, and uh, all you have to do is uh, confess and forsake your sins and follow Christ and uh, keep his commandments and the first commandment is to love God with all your heart mind soul and strength and the second is like it which is to love your neighbor as yourself and so the, those are the two core uh, commandments that a Christian must follow if we wish to be saved uh, but we must continue in faith until the very end and then we will receive our reward when we are with Christ in eternity. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you shalom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.